Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with my mum. Hello. Yay! <laughs> a lot of you have asked for my mum's insight into a lot of things like what it's like being the mum of a ballet student and just knowing what to do really. I think it's a big struggle for a lot of ballet mums and also, you know, knowing when to push your child, knowing when to give your child more opportunity within the ballet industry and also knowing whether you should get involved with the other mums and the drama that can come with that. So yeah, let's talk about it, mum. So we don't have time to go through the whole, the whole journey. But I think obviously when I was younger, I was having Saturday classes and then I was introduced to a Russian coach. But again, I was only having classes on the weekend once a week. Couldn't do the splits, could I? No. Couldn't do the splits, had very little turnout. All I had was archy feet and good proportions, right? And if you remember, some teachers said you would never have the correct amount of turnout. Do you remember? Yeah. That you would never be able to do it. Did you hear that? Never be able to do it. <laughs> I was at Tring School of Performing Arts. My parents had already given quite a lot of investment into getting me into a private school and because it was a school where we did all kinds of dance. Did you think at that point that I would become a ballet dancer or were you just again hoping I'd end up something creative? No, I think by the time you got to Tring, which is when you were 11, you really definitely wanted to be a ballet dancer. Yeah, but did you think? I always believed in you. I always thought you could. You know, along the way, teachers made quite negative comments about you. And, yeah, um, but you, and, you didn't tell me, did you? No. Why not? Well, I think if you tell people depressing news, you know, I did believe that Izzy could actually do it if she wanted to, or at least I was prepared to go along with it and support you. And and you were very good. It's just that, for instance, um, a one teacher when you were about 10 or 11 said you had no turnout, and it, as if it was like a terminal thing. Yeah. You know, that it would always remain like that. As a parent, you do worry then about putting all your eggs in a ballet basket when there are various negative comments around. Mm. But the idea of Tring, which is actually Was a that... really fantastic school, mm. but it turned out to be... At the time, anyway. ...really fantastic for musical theatre. Drama. Fact, drama, yeah. And it did have fantastic success creating actors for the West End yeah. stage and stuff. Just but not in terms so of, good for the ballet. Not so good for the ballet, that's right. And yeah. So then um, you started to want to go to the Royal Ballet School. And I think as a parent, I came to realise that if your child wants to be a ballet dancer in the UK, really, I think there's probably only one school, and that's the Royal Ballet School. That's worth it. That has a good chance of you getting where you want to go. Yeah, I think that's probably pretty much still the case. And so obviously the first year I applied for the Royal Ballet School, I was just still at Tring having my Russian coach on the weekends because we all knew that the ballet wasn't good enough at Tring, not for to a professional level. And so, and you do what you, you have to. So I was going to the Royal Ballet School Saturdays for the mid-associates because that was my foot in the door. And then I was seeing my Russian coach on Sundays. I literally didn't have any time off did I no you you were working seven days a week and that's a worry if you're a mum yeah because there was absolutely no downtime no downtime but somehow I coped with that I didn't feel like that much because I do think even though Tring was full on it didn't feel so physically draining because the classes just weren't as difficult like I did my Sunday class and I was sore for the rest of the week from the Sunday <laughs> class you know but then let's fast forward so I didn't get into the Royal Ballet School the first year did I no you didn't there was one audition wasn't there and you didn't get in and I think that was in London no um, but the final audition is always in London Ah, oh, right, okay. And I did the final audition and I forgot my toe pads. It's that whole story. So oh, forgot, that's right, the toe pad story, yeah. Yeah, I forgot my toe pads and so I was literally wincing doing a chapeze in front of Gaylene Stock. I think she did actually quite like me and so she was kind of just like, are you okay? What's, what's wrong with you? And I cried the whole way home. But then the next year, we were a bit strategic, didn't we? We did the audition in, in a more rural yeah, location. We, we, we could have found um, an audition centre in the Outer Hebrides, would have gone there on the basis <laughs> on the basis there might have only been eight people. Yeah. If you go to some really major centre like London, you know, you're just going to be one of many. Got to found a way to get to know 
people at the Royal Ballet School or equivalent mm. beforehand, it's very difficult to kind of make your mark. You just get a number plastered on your chest. And, and if you're a mum, you know, and all the mums very agitated and this is the big thing, mm. in a way, the more remote the audition setting, the better. Yeah, so the second time I did the audition in Bath, yeah. stood out there because um, I was... Just fewer people. Yeah, and I'd been working really hard that year as well because I was so upset that I didn't get in the first time. I don't like losing. <laughs> yeah, I got in. So now we're in the Royal Ballet School. And so now you are, obviously, there's like a real sign now that your daughter's going to do well mm. and make it. Yeah, you know, It's labelled as where the cream of the crop go. They make that clear, don't they? Yes. In fact, I remember them saying that. <laughs> yeah, they um, said it a lot. <laughs> the, 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 after the audition, the kids were chosen and all sitting, if you remember, in the um, that Not, lo yeah. lovely salon. And I think Gaylene Stock made this little speech about how they were all the cream of the crop. But this is the first day. That right? was the first day. So not after the audition, because you get a letter. Oh, right. OK. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes, that's right. I'm getting mixed up. The first day. Yeah. yeah. The cream of the crop. Yeah. yeah, I know. I remember that chat. Obviously, there's this whole culture of ballet mums. And what did you feel? Because I think a lot of parents feel like, should they get involved with the other mums? And there can be a lot of rivalry between mm -hmm. not just the kids. I would say even more so sometimes the mums. The parents want their children to do really well. Mm. Did you get involved with the group or stay out I, of it? I suppose you get to know, say, two or three or four other mums that you bond with a, bond bit. With a little bit yes because it's it's just like any other group of people you know you're not going to bond with everybody and then there'd be a lot that you didn't really speak to very much but I mean I think it's probably worth saying because it sounds a bit elitist um, always you know getting into somewhere like the Royal Ballet School if you've got talent you can get a grant if you can't afford to go you know you can get help with fees or even all the fees paid for because they really are looking for talent and they don't want talent to be excluded by the fact you can't afford to go so it's probably um, mm. important to say that but then you do get kind of rivalries between the kids and also rivalries between the mums sort of who perhaps don't like one of their kids getting a, a break when they think their kid should have got the part so as with all these things. Did you ever come into any strange conversations or altercations with any mums not with mums no <laughs> not with mums no but at the time uh, there was a lot of this is sort of early 2000s and I'm pretty sure things have changed in the meantime but of course if you're a parent it's really scary because you see other parents who you know who are not in the ballet world and their children may be aiming at well, many other careers or they may not even know what they're going to do yet, but they'll certainly be part of a really broad curriculum of study, doing their O-levels and eventually A-levels. GCSEs, you mean? GCSEs, God, you know, that dates me. With ballet, although there is a curriculum, you are going to do maths, English and so on, um, it's a much smaller curriculum. And uh, so you really are putting all your eggs in one basket uh, to a certain extent anyway. And that is frightening because you don't know how well your child is going to do. Are you saying that you were worried that the Royal Ballet School would deliver? I was extremely worried if the Royal Ballet School would deliver, even if you had talent. And the, the reason for that was there was no very little track record at that time of the Royal Ballet School producing dancers. Um, that sounds a bit unlikely, I know. But at the time, the company was populated by dancers who'd been got from competitions like the Prix de Lausanne, in fact, all parts of the globe. And very few new dancers were finding their way into the company. And if they did find their way into the company from the Royal Ballet School, I stress at that time, they may be just in the corps de ballet or at the very most... Uh, become a soloist and so, my, so this was really frightening <laughs> so my mum is a previous journalist and so she's pretty feisty and so <laughs> in the Royal Ballet School she wasn't afraid of complaining and saying hello when are you going to produce <laughs> some talent some you know some professional dancers here who are from England I didn't really know that my mum was protesting so much and it didn't necessarily I was thinking back now that I know that you complained quite a lot to them you know weren't you worried that complaining would affect my you know my actual experience there 
No, not really. I did have a very good relationship with people who were there at the time, but I felt that I had to be blunt (laughs) because the stakes were so high and, you know, in terms of what your child is doing. Mm. So uh, um, I did have some quite funny conversations as well as forthright conversations. I mean, I do remember at one point, I think you had hurt your shins and you were being made to jump on them. Yeah, because I was growing a lot as you... Everybody knows, I've spoken about growing a lot. So obviously when you grow, your bones grow, but then your muscles are like really stretched. So they have to catch up. So I, along with a lot of the male students, um, was really struggling with growth pains. And so jumping would give me the most excruciating shin pain. And so I would obviously say, do you mind if I don't jump? You know, I can't jump. And I felt so compelled and so scared to tell the teacher that I would jump regardless. And I would be in so much pain. And so you got involved, didn't you? Well, yes, I remember I was um, I was in Newcastle at the time and I, I made a phone call to uh, the school to say that I, you know, I didn't actually want Izzy to be jumping on her leg at the moment. And um, I was told, for God's sake, you know, cut the umbilical cord. <laughs> and so that was quite, I actually felt that was quite funny. What did um, you say? To that because that's that's quite shocking you're paying this school thousands and then the ballet mistress says cut the, um- cut the umbilical cord because you're saying don't make my daughter dance on her painful shins yes i think a teacher would Hilarious. be irritated if a, if a parent got too involved and obviously she felt i was too involved i wouldn't make someone dance in pain like it's no. pointless no and obviously, I was actually almost made to dance in a lot of pain. Like, do you remember when I sprained my calf? Because again, growing very long body. And so I wasn't used to doing a lot of rises. So my calf sprained. And so an outside physio said, look, you can't dance on that. That needs like a week of rest and you need to wear character shoes. So I was wearing character shoes and then I was taken into the physio office, you know, and literally screamed at because I needed to take a couple of days off. And basically was saying, if you're going to be the type of student who needs to take time off, like it was pretty horrendous. And I was only like 14. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I mean, other things that kind of worry you as a mum is that you feel as though it's a funny thing. You feel as though your own body's being judged, you know, not only your child's body. Looking at the um, genes. Looking at the genes, you know. And I remember I was having one conversation with Gaini and another teacher going being the head of the junior section of the Royal Ballet School at the time yeah. and um, I think she was head of the whole school she was she? oh was she oh yes of course she was head yeah. of the whole school and then I noticed her looking down at my feet we were all sitting and my um, ankles funnily enough are very very uh, flexible but in the wrong direction inwards <laughs> <laughs> and not outwards as my mom, required by my mum has a habit of sitting with her legs crossed and massively turned in and <laughs> yeah. her feet are quite large as well so when they're turned in they look very turned in and so and so I just saw I just feet. saw um Galen i.e head of Royal Ballet School I saw go. her eyes kind of go like down sort of almost horrified <laughs> at this totally yeah. turned in foot which I Enough. Basically realising like, why I was also turned in. And there were other so prejudices, I'm... such as, which I did hear at the time, like uh, a Celtic body is a long body with short legs. And I thought, that sounds a bit like me. <laughs> and, uh, so, But you have to remember as, as a, as a mum that, um, of course, genes can skip generations and your daughter uh, or No, son, I mean, it was obvious maybe... I didn't have long body, short legs. No, that's Long body, right. long legs. <laughs> So that's why I was long. <laughs> but, Just um, long. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway. So yeah, I mean, talking about the Royal Ballet School, we could talk about that for a long time. But in general, I didn't have the best experience. It wasn't that fun. What with, I haven't got into detail on this, but like I was bullied. The teachers were kind of bullying as well. Did not know how to nurture my growing young body. I do think it's hopefully better now. I know still I've heard from, you know, lots of people that... Some people are still having not so great experiences. Some people have great experiences. It's like everywhere. Even at Vaganova, some people had a terrible time. But I personally loved it. It was hard, but I loved it. So obviously, mm. throughout all this, we weren't sure about the Royal Ballet School. And the upper school was approaching. And I wasn't sure whether I actually wanted to do that. And by this point, we had been going to the Vaganova a couple of times, mm. making friends and going to check out the school, even asking mm. if I could go at 13. And I was a bit too young at that point. But 
they liked me and they saw my arabesque and my grand plié à la seconde um, in second and they were like, okay, like come back in a bit. At this point, were you already thinking like maybe upper school is not a good idea and we should actually send her to the Vaganda? And what was that mm. as a parent? Send it, what was that idea in your head like of thinking, sending your school, your daughter to Russia and leaving her there? Pretty horrendous, actually. Um, I'm, you know, absolutely terrifying. But we, I do remember we looked at the Royal Ballet suddenly, very, very objectively, and we kind of realised everybody was very tiny. Do you remember? Yeah, tiny uh, as in as tiny in small. people. <laughs> even small. even by the standards of of today. I mean, yeah, Margot I mean, Fontaine was what about five foot? I'm like above average anyway. Yeah. And so like I'm five foot ten. So. Of no. course, the encouraging things at the time were that Darcy Bustle was, what, five, seven and a bit or five, eight? Like five, eight. Sylvie Guillem was five, seven. around that kind of height. But it was all, you know, and but they were fighting over Jonathan Cope at the time because he was six foot three. Um, so anyway, there were loads of factors, weren't there? It wasn't um, just the tallness, though. It was the fact that I didn't think at that time I wasn't favoured. I wasn't one of the favoured ones because I wasn't you know, one of the smallest, I'd grown a lot. So whereas I've said before, a lot of those students had matured already and were pretty strong. I was like quite lanky and had a lot of work to do, but I still felt like I had a lot of potential because it's a nice, it's a nice body when you have long legs and everything, but it's much harder to manage and you need a lot of help. And by this point, we'd had a lot of exposure to Russian ballet both from Zena, the coach, and also yeah. just from watching Russian ballets and going to Russia. We'd been a couple of times in secret in the holidays mm. and, you know, met Alt and I already at this point. Well, for three years, actually, um, we'd been going to Russia because of Zena, who was uh, had become a family friend, hadn't she, by yeah. then? Zena, of course, was from the Vaganova Ballet Academy and she was in the year, I think, below... Uh, Rudolf Nureyev, who, as uh, you said, was a very rude boy. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, it was a great privilege to be taken there by Zena um, to St. Petersburg. And we mm. went with a friend, if you remember, your friend Emma. So it yeah. was a bit of a holiday, but every mm. morning Izzy and Emma would have a lesson in a fairly shambolic studio somewhere. Well, you've seen excerpts of that already on the channel with Gennady Zalutsky. Yeah. I've shared... I've shared those lessons yes. on the channel. Um, yeah. Treasured memories. And so Gennady gave some insights and gave help. And he said in that video, not flexible enough. You know, we've got boys with more flexible legs than you. And so I really struggled, as you guys know. As you've seen in my Vaganova videos later on, so flexible, legs by our ears. That has all been worked for. Everything's been worked yeah. for. I mean, from a mum's point of view, the... Um, but the idea uh, of leaving me there. The idea of leaving you there, I mean, a great mountain had been climbed um, uh, when it came to getting an offer to go there. And I do remember us sitting before Alt and I, Asil Maratova, the artistic and director, Vera, no? and Vera, who was the general director of the school. And um, I think you were 14 or 15. 15, about 15. To be and uh, they'd rejected you, though, the year before when you were 14. They kept saying, foreigners don't stay, foreigners don't stay, they can't hack it. And, um, <laughs> yeah, and me so, being me, uh, I, this, like, I can hack it, I can uh, do it. <laughs> Let me in, please. <laughs> At this point, as a mum, I was worried about lots of things. I was worried about money. I was worried about leaving Isabella in Russia. Um, how would she cope? So many things. But in a way, it was just by then totally supporting this mission to get into this school because uh, the Royal Bay School didn't feel quite you, did it? Didn't feel quite comfortable. And more than that, the attraction of this Russian school with such a fantastic history. History um, and also track record. Like, look, yeah. at how, look at how many stars they churn out every, yes. every single year. It's like there's a star every year, like every year. There's there's never a, 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 just an okay class. Every, yeah. every class is impeccable. And so how can you turn that down? Like their history is just amazing. Yeah. Um, so when they said you could go there, mm. we thought that that was fantastic. And after that... We started to really worry 
because you know when you agitate for something and of course you do really push for your child but then if you get it you think oh my god what have I done really um, is that what you thought uh, well yes to, to, to a certain extent because you were you were so young anyway um, I was excited and yeah. also I was relieved because now I had for me as a student I had no less pressure with the upper school invitation because we were approaching that time when we had to audition for the upper school and deep down I didn't want to go to the upper school like the Royal Ballet School didn't feel like it would be me for me especially because I just didn't feel like I would be nurtured enough to reach my potential and I felt like I would get that in Russia you do like gosh you do a bar in Russia and you're dead it's true because when you're tall your center of gravity is in a different place and you require such strength to be on those long legs well so when you extend your leg out to the side it's so long like it's much harder to hold that leg it's further away from you so you need to be so much stronger as well as yeah. just moving quick, controlling it. Do you remember the first day at the school? I mean, I'll well, tell we're not you, there yet. Oh, we're not there yet. Yeah, but <laughs> let's let's go in chronological order. Okay. So then I'm auditioning for the upper school. And yeah. um, by this point, I'd already like been, oh, forget it. I don't want to go anyway. But the, I still felt that pressure of like, well, I hope I actually do get in though because I don't want to be told no. Basically, we, we went into the office and when we're told about if we got in or not, it was the most horrendous meeting we've ever had. You weren't there, but it was literally like... Is that when you went in one door and were sent out of another? Yeah, in one door, out the other. And it was, and we could t- tell who got in or not because they'd be like crying when they left. The, you know, the ballet mistress and Gailey would be in there and they basically say everything that was wrong with you, everything that was wrong, being like, your turnout's not good enough, your flexibility's not good enough, your ricarte line is not good, um, this isn't good, this isn't good. And so I was like, okay, can you just spit it out? At this point, I just know, you, I know you're not going to offer me a place. So I was on the edge of tears, and then they would go, but we'd like to offer you a place to the upper school. And I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I actually burst into tears. Yeah. Not from happiness. It was just like, God, like what a relief. But it was... Um, the most awful way to go about it. I thought it was horrible. Sounds a bit like The Apprentice. <laughs> yeah, you're fired. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so that happened. And I think after that, I revealed to everyone that I had actually got into the Baganova and I was going. And then loads of other students got competitive and were like, well, I've actually gotten into Paris Opera. And I've got, and I was like, okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> it was a funny time, but I was kind yeah. of, when it came to Russia and going there mm. and leaving on the plane, obviously terrified. Mm. I cried the whole way there. You were trying to film me. And yes. I was like, put it away, please. Yeah. Just talk a bit about what it was like to actually leave me there. So you've, you, we've unpacked. We've, well, we stayed for a couple of days, if you remember. And yeah. we, we, we had... Bearing um, in mind, I've barely boarded up to this point. And that was because you were bullied. Yeah, because I was bullied. So I didn't want to stay, you know... I, I was yeah. often a day people. So, so this was huge for me, mm-hmm. actually being left in another country and never and not seeing my mum for months, you know. So tell us about that. That was hard, no? But by this point, obviously, you knew, yeah. you knew that I had potential. You knew that I was good. Yeah, I knew you had potential. And, um, and then I recall, the only thing I could ever say to other mums is you really have to have as much knowledge as possible about the school, about ballet, you have to learn it as well because mm. otherwise you can't be much help to Having your said that though, child. with regards to how involved you got with me, yeah. I don't feel like you ever got that involved with me. Like, for example, I needed to work on my flexibility. I needed to work on my turnout. You weren't a pushy mum. You no, weren't. No. You weren't someone who was like, make sure you do your exercises, make sure you do them. Like, that wasn't you. No, not at all. I, and honestly, that would not have worked for me. No. At all. Barely let my mum watch a lesson. I mean, I know there are mums... Um, no, there who, are. ...who kind of drive their children, really. Um, it doesn't work. And, ...and make lots of comments and stuff. Yeah, it doesn't um, work. You've got to regard it, I think, as it's your child's choice to do this thing. And obviously you try to support with how support. to make it happen. Yeah. But you can't possibly comment on the actual thing itself because you don't know anything about it, not like a teacher does. No, but some mothers do get extremely involved. Like you just said, have as much knowledge. Some of them have a lot of knowledge, like they know everything. Yeah. And they even know what exercises they should do. Yeah. But, and they're, they're extremely involved. Fair play to the, to the students that act, like don't mind that and that mm. works for... But for a lot of people, I actually think that makes people resent it 
and resent the ballet and not want to do it. You weren't like that. No, it's funny though. I remember a lot of people thought that I must be a rude... When you started to become quite successful in school, yeah. a lot of people thought that it was like me driving you. Who thought that? Um, relatives even do you remember uh, well, I'm not going to let's name, not talk about I'm relatives. not going to name them <laughs> <laughs> it was as if they they would accuse you of like it was your ambition and not your child's ambition yeah but so you get all sorts mm, of nonsense along the way well I would always say like you don't know how hard this is there's no way I could do this yeah like if I was pushed like there's no way you can do this if it's not coming from you right so mum we've spoken a lot about the journey now tell us some funny anecdotes over the over the periods of time there's one thing that i remember um, when we're at the royal ballet school if you think about differences between schools at the royal ballet school where the parents were assembled and the teachers were showing us i think it, we were being inducted uh, so it must be at the start of being at the royal ballet school we we're being shown how your child is going to be touched um, in the course of, you know, being trained. And two fingers were put up, you know, like this. Just these two... Scouts on her. Scouts on her. <laughs> two fingers were put up. And we will touch your child. And then, uh, you know, there was a child there, a sort of victim person. <laughs> no, the child was there. And um, and the two fingers were placed very lightly on the, the thigh above the knee or, you know, some other part of the body to just put your child into the correct position. What made me laugh later on was um, you, when, when we got to Russia, we met a, a fantastic man called Boris Brigvadza, and he was one of the teachers of the boys. He's and died actually, now. He's died now, sadly, and he's one of the greatest dancers from the past. Anyway, so Boris is teaching his boys, and by comparison to the two fingers on the hands, um, on the body in the Royal Ballet School, um, the first thing I saw was Brigvadza throwing a chair at one of his boys who'd not got an exercise correct. And I've um, seen Brigvadza go, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like this. Yeah. I mean, that's not that's not great it's, either. But It's <laughs> not great, but it was funny. And, and actually not representative either of... Uh, no, that was just him. They didn't it, all throw chairs. It was chairs. just... No, they didn't all, in fact, I, that was the single chair throwing incident. I but it was him. funny because obviously yeah. you had that very thorough chat of how your child's going to be approached. And yes. then, you know, the Russian school is like, I'll approach it how I want to. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah. so that was just a funny thing. When we first arrived at the Vaganova, I was held back a year because they said, you know, your muscle above the knee is not strong enough. I shared that with you before. Like, your muscles are not strong enough. You need to do the year you've just done in England again. And initially, we were super worried about that because I was like, oh, no, I'm going to be held back. And it, like, we didn't see how great an opportunity that was. And so we were concerned. And so my mum and my Russian coach from London, just funnily enough, were then, after that conversation, looking into a class window, right? Oh, the seventh of the seventh grade, were you just looking through the window? We were looking through the window because we were a bit puzzled as to why Isabella had been held back into year six. And that really annoyed the teachers, one particular teacher. Well, the director, the Alton director, Alton. because. So because she, it happened to be next, because the, the the window we were looking through happened to be next to her office. So she saw you, she saw you like looking at the other class that was mm. the older class that I was supposed to be going in. Like she was yeah, very we, offended by that. Yeah, and so, because they had taken a lot of trouble to explain that the muscles in Isabella's legs were not properly developed in her um, thighs and therefore she needed to go back a year so they were offended anyway we came back after lunch to the school and found that we couldn't get in and <laughs> so they'd locked the doors on you <laughs> they locked the doors and you didn't know why well I knew that I'd probably offended her I, I sort of put two and two together but I didn't know why and, but there was um, nothing there was nothing hugely I don't understand what was hugely wrong so it was taken as lack of respect for but what you could have just been, been watching told. the class not necessarily thinking. I think we were rather silly. I think we might have actually said that we, I don't know whether we admitted what we were doing. Oh, or now not. it's coming out. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> later on, I did see Art and I outside the school. And uh, I said, I'm really sorry that, you know, I've offended you. And uh, she said, if, if we wanted to go back to our little school in England, um, we were very welcome. <laughs> but actually, My mum didn't tell me any of this. <laughs> I was not around. Where was I? Oh, you were just 
doing classes or something. You, you weren't with me anyway. I was just, ah, okay. So I'd already yeah. started. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, my mum revealed that to me much later. I was very annoyed she'd done but, that. But, I mean, this is all about, um, you know, there's tremendous respect for teachers in Russia and um and I think and, you just uh, didn't know what you were doing. We didn't then. know what we were doing, no. <laughs> yeah. But, but then yeah. it turned out to be really, really great because obviously I got four years training out of it, which I needed. Yeah. I really needed that. So and, and that year that they made me do again, the sixth grade, really made me so strong because it was very regimented, very academic, holding our legs for ages, mm -hmm. jumping a lot. So they know what they're doing and they really did me a huge favour. Just, just one thing before we finish this particular session. One thing that made me relax as a, a mum was that the the ladies, some of whom were babushki, babushki as they were known. Babushkas, no? Babushkas. Babushkas, babushkas. In the um, school, looking after the international students. They were just fantastic. They really were like surrogate mums, weren't they? They were quite brisk sometimes but they really did look after the students and that was quite relaxing <laughs> maybe for you and not for me I, they were just constantly telling me what I needed to do where to be Isabella have you got your canteen tickets have you been for lunch are you going out in that jumper you need a coat <laughs> this kind of thing yeah um but no really nice and just quite comforting like every time I would come in they'd be like are you tired are you tired? It's like, yeah, I'm still tired. I'm tired every day. <laughs> but no, really nice. But mum, thank you so much for coming on. I think there's a lot we can talk about. So if you enjoyed my mum being on the channel, let us know. Comment down below if this was helpful for any mums out there. And also just if it was nice to hear some of these memories um, from both of us. And I'll happily get my mum on again for more. And if you want to hear anything from her specifically, um, let us know because obviously we've spoken a lot about a lot of things today but if there's anything in particular do let us know and please like and subscribe for more thank you so much mum let's pleasure. wave let's wave to the world bye guys bye